Who has the best air defense shield against ballistic missiles? Russia? The combination of the S-400 and S-500 is legendary, but recently it showed weakness against Ukrainian FPV drones and short-range ATAC-MS ballistic missiles. But what about America? Well, Trump's future Golden Dome might look shiny, at least in Photoshop, because if Trump ever gets gold from American taxpayers, you can be sure it won't go toward building a dome to protect them. It'll probably end up in Trump's and his merry band's pockets. America spends $1 trillion on defense, and yet they still have nothing impressive to show for it. But what about Israel? Now we're talking. Israel has the best reason in the world to build a perfect defense shield, because Iran can produce up to 300 ballistic missiles every month. So Israel's multi-layer defense system has to be perfect. We can easily say Israel currently has one of the best air defense systems in the world, capable of stopping around 180 Iranian ballistic missiles at once during the recent conflict with Iran. That's why India once chose Israel as its partner to develop its own air defense shield. But in the future, it might be Israel that asks India for help. Because India is now building a multi-layered air defense network that can protect the nation with four layers against drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and even satellites. India currently operates the S-400, the Akash Air Defense System, and even the Barak system co-developed with Israel. Many argue that India's air defense capabilities already surpass Russia's, especially considering its past conflicts with Pakistan. But here's the billion dollar question. Why does India need an even better air defense system? And just how strong will it be? If we share our full opinion here, YouTube will ban us. There's a lot we can't talk about openly on this platform without risking removal. So if you want uncensored and honest content, check out our Telegram channel linked below in the description. Join us there to get exclusive updates and content we can't share on YouTube. See you on Telegram. What is the most dangerous weapon currently available to the superpowers? Many would argue different things, but in my opinion, it's hypersonic missiles. Why? Imagine this. An ICBM is launched from Russia toward the United States. As soon as the missile leaves the atmosphere, American radar systems detect it, giving them 20 to 30 minutes to intercept. But that's not the case with hypersonic missiles. They fly at low altitudes, and because of the Earth's curvature and mountain ranges, Radar can't easily detect them. For example, in the recent conflict between Iran and Israel, Israel could detect an Iranian ballistic missile with around seven minutes to react. But with Iran's new Fatah hypersonic missile, that reaction time was reduced to just 30 seconds. And here's the terrifying part. A normal ballistic missile follows a predictable trajectory, like shooting an arrow into the sky and watching it arc back down. But a hypersonic missile constantly changes direction and altitude, making it almost impossible to intercept, especially when you only have 30 seconds to react. However, India recently tested its own hypersonic missile. And because India knows how to build one, it also knows how to destroy one. India is now developing both anti-ballistic and anti-hypersonic defense programs alongside its own hypersonic weapons. That's pure genius. India has a plan to create a perfect defensive dome over its skies, one that could surpass even Israel's. But what exactly is this system, and how does it work? That's what we're going to find out next. India has many projects for the future, some ready now, others coming soon. Here we explain some of the best. India already operates the S-400, but you need to understand the S-400 isn't a single weapon. It uses different interceptors, small, agile missiles for low altitude, small targets, and very large missiles to destroy incoming ballistic threats at ranges beyond 400 kilometers. The S-400 is one of the best in its class, but India wants to make it legendary. Under the Kusha project, India is building three new missiles to add to the S-400 and later to field an indigenous launcher. The system has strict requirements. First, each missile must have a true hit-to-kill mechanism capable of destroying ICBMs, similar in concept to Israel's David Sling, but each interceptor must also be able to counter agile fighter jets like the American Patriot system. In short, 
we're looking at variants tuned for very specific tasks. The first layer will engage at ranges up to 400 kilometers, intercepting ballistic missiles as they re-enter the atmosphere or hypersonic threats flying lower, roughly between 8 and 20 kilometers altitude. Unlike typical Russian or American interceptors, this new missile's design looks different, a reinforced body that suggests India expects it to endure high G maneuvers and extreme heating from friction when flying low in dense air. The design also shows relatively small fins compared with the missile body, which implies thrust vectoring for insane maneuverability, the kind of agility you see on Russian flanker fighters. If that long-range missile fails, Kusha has a second interceptor with about 140 kilometers range. Its slimmer body suggests it's optimized for both medium-altitude ballistic intercepts, 20 kilometers, and very low-altitude cruise missile threats. And if that one fails, a final short-range missile, roughly 50 kilometers, is launched to reach high speed as quickly as possible. It's very small compared to the other interceptors and built to finish the job. This layered approach mirrors Israel's strategy. Arrow and David Sling engage threats far out while Iron Dome handles closer targets. But unlike Iron Dome, which primarily destroys drones and cruise missiles traveling below the speed of sound, the Indian system is being built to engage very high-speed targets, up to five times the speed of sound. India is also learning from Israel, Russia, and Ukraine. Recent conflicts showed how costly high-end defenses can be. Israel reportedly spent 2.5 billions defending itself, while the Iran's costs were far lower, around 50 millions. So India needed a cheaper, scalable solution. And here's the interesting part. India already has started building exactly that. First, let's talk about Russia and how even their powerful S-400 is struggling against small drones. Because, as the saying goes, you don't kill a fly with an RPG. Each FPV drone costs around $300, but an S-400 interceptor missile, even if it could shoot down those tiny drones, which it can't, costs around $2 million each. Even Russian short-range systems like the Pantsir S-1 have failed to stop large drone swarms effectively, but both India and China have found the perfect solution to this growing problem. Both countries are developing anti-drone laser systems, and not just simple lasers. These advanced lasers can destroy entire drone swarms using just one system. India even has a new system capable of firing multiple laser beams simultaneously, making it perfect for short-range defense against small drones. However, lasers do have limitations. While firing a laser costs practically $0 per shot, lasers are vulnerable to dust, fog, and bad weather, which can reduce their range and effectiveness significantly. That's why India is combining laser defense with the Akash air defense system, ensuring that no matter the conditions, India's skies remain protected. The Akash system is low cost, effective against drones and cruise missiles, and most importantly, India has tested both Akash and its laser systems in real combat, becoming the first nation to use laser weapons on the battlefield. India has the Akash system. And here, on Caspian Insight, we have you. You've stood with us all this time, and I want to thank you for your incredible support. But now, I need your help. Tell me in the comments, should this channel continue focusing only on India's defense, or should we start covering other countries as well? Thank you for being here. This is Caspian Insight, signing off.